So my name is Jason. I'm a, uh, an assistant professor here at the School of Management. Um, my research really focuses in on people at work. So I got my degree from the University of South Carolina um, and in organizational behavior and human resource management. And I market my research as uh, exploring the interpersonal social dynamics of work, which is me trying to fancy up what I do, which is really just exploring how people come together to form their social environment. And then how does that social environment then impact the people? Um, we're social creatures. We interact together within an organization, within a business. We hope that we can achieve some sort of goal, but we also know that uh, there's often times where we conflict with each other and we set up situations to benefit ourselves at the damage of the group. All those kind of dynamics are interesting and problematic. Um, I do a majority of my research through the lens of dynamics. So how do things change? How does feedback processes occur within the social environment? So one of the biggest areas that I've, I've actually been able to apply this thinking to is in the trust world. Uh, within trust, there's the theory of how trust grows that initially trust is great. We come together, we trust each other. It builds up, we trust each other more, it builds up. And then at some points there's a violation of some sort in trust and suddenly I don't trust you anymore. So I step back, our trust falls, but then eventually uh, restoration can happen. We work together some more and we rebuild our trust. Um, prior to me entering this field, um, the theory was there, but the methods for testing any sort of ideas surrounding that type of model was lacking. So I introduced the random coefficient discontinuous growth modeling, huge big mouthful of a word. The idea is it's growth models that can jump around um, to allow for the exploration of individual characteristics and social influence on these changes in trust over time. So what is really cool is after I published the paper that introduced this model to trust, uh, I got uh, contacted by a clinical psychologist in Australia who was looking at how borderline personality disorder influences trust growth. And we were like, wow, it's peanut butter and chocolate and let's come together and make a Reese's peanut butter cup. Um, so it's we went through and modeled her data in my methodological approach. And we found that one of the key problems that borderline personality disorder has is it actually causes people to respond the exact opposite way that we would assume you would respond in any sort of trust situation. So whenever your partner was acting very trusting, the person with borderline personality disorder would be very suspicious. But as soon as there was a violation, the person with borderline personality disorder became super trusting. And then when restoration occurred, they went back to their suspicious way. And it matches the, the thinking of borderline personality disorder as this inability to understand social cues. And in the trust world, if they don't understand social cues, they're not acting in the way we would normally expect, and it sets up all these problems. So that's just uh, me in a nutshell. Uh, like thinking dynamically and multi-level, 